Good evening. Nice to see you all here. So in 2000, that's when you became director of BBC Sport, and you helped win back some very high-profile events. And during that time, you began interactive coverage of the Wimbledon tennis. That was, yeah. a, that was a real pioneering all move. All the courts, the red yeah. button. Yeah. Um, and I think, was it at that time that you, the, you created the charity, the Sport Relief Charity, or was that later? Yeah, when I moved to BBC Sport, it was a... I mean, it was a kind of tough time. They were a bit of a sort of relegation team, mm. just to borrow the kind of sporting metaphor. And I'd been a supporter of Comic Reliefs, and we came up with a plan that in the down years, because uh, Comic Relief was every two years then. Right. And we said, listen, wouldn't it be a bit better the other every other? Yeah, if yeah, it was yeah. Comic Relief, Sport Relief, Comic Relief, Sport Relief. And we invented the Sport Relief charity, which BBC Sport and mm -hmm. Comic Relief did together. And it was, yeah, it was you know, wonderful public service entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's raised £200 million. Big, these were big companies, Shine, Endemol. It's trying to get it all together. There's a huge number of production labels. In fact, the data I was given by your people was 120 production companies in more than 28 markets, 700 production titles across genres and platforms, 50 languages. I mean, my goodness. So has, has I mean, that's big. Has the merger, bringing all this stuff together, has it actually worked? Well, I was kind of lucky in some ways because when Sophie Turner Lang asked me to come and join the company, I think a lot of the kind of heavier lifting mm -hmm. had been done. So... You know, I'm not as aware of the kind of end of all shine, you know, differences mm -hmm. of culture or shows who owned what, who brought what to the marriage. I think it's a kind of company that we don't waste time. Uh -huh. um, we're pretty straightforward. If stuff doesn't, um, you know, make your ability to develop ideas and pitch ideas and win ideas better, then we can't be doing with it. I think respecting, you know, creative differences mm -hmm. and creative endeavor, endeavor and backing punts and hunches yeah. uh, and doing some things when they seem rather unlikely, you know, but who knows where the next great idea is going to come from. I how, think actually we strike a decent balance. How do you describe yourself? I mean, you know, are you sort of, do you think of yourself as sort of the creative Sven Galley yeah. who has to listen to ideas and then say, ooh. I'm trying to safeguard, you know, the investment in and the room for creativity on the board. The UK business, I think, is clearly the, the biggest creative engine. It is. We are by far the biggest traveler of international IP in the world. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that we've done mm -hmm. since the days of Big Brother mm -hmm. and MasterChef. And mm -hmm. I think we traveled 43 formats around the world last year. Mm -hmm. And I think 16 or 17 of them were from the UK. Wow. So the UK creates okay. a lot of original content, yeah. mm -hmm. which other people love and want to buy. Mm -hmm. And we try and create the space to talk about ideas. Sometimes that's scripted. You know, we have scripted gatherings where we talk mm -hmm. and we swap stuff mm -hmm. and we, we show clips. It's mainly non-scripted because non-scripted formats travel, yeah, yeah, travel uh, right. more speedily and more effectively so than you, anything else. So you have some real super brands. I mean, Big Brother is obviously a super yeah. brand. How long can it really last? I mean, it, it, you Well, know. it's got to yeah, last. You know, a lot of the... Lot it's got to last. <laughs> well, yeah, it's got, it's got to last. I mean, MasterChef, Big Brother, it, it's having a tougher competitive time in the UK, Big Brother, but it's number one on Thursday nights in CBS in the States. Um, it's, you know huge all around the world. It's the biggest show in Israel. What's kind of amazing about those super brands and super formats, which I now really understand, is they're a calling card to viewers. You know, when they scan the schedules and they're thinking about what they know, what they don't know, what they're going to give half a chance to, the fact that you own one of those big formats and you've spun it off and you've made it, you know, I thought rather successfully ITV with the voice kids. And yeah, yeah. I see that Strictly is going to be uh, Strictly Junior in the States. Junior, yeah. We do Junior MasterChef mm -hmm. in... Uh, mm -hmm. I think in 27 countries now. Yeah, yeah. It's fun, and it's such a joyful, wholesome, brilliant thing. But it only exists because we really think about what the local iteration might be, and how we can, in you know, get someone to invest in it for the long term. Because so as a brand, it's so important for the yeah. company. Let's talk about um, digital creativity because it's something yeah. that's becoming more and more important. We've got a billion YouTube plays last year, and I think we, I think 75 percent of them were for our television content. So, yeah. it, you know, the... They say the, the TV content really dri yeah, it, drives it's, it. Yeah. It's enormous in that space. So I mean, does not it make money? Because I get it that yeah, you need to be does. there. And, yeah, you know, it doesn't you... make enough... It doesn't make the money we would like, but we want to grow it. Yeah. We've touched on it already a little bit, talking about, you know, the big digital platforms. We've yeah. mentioned Facebook. We've mentioned um, uh, YouTube. The yeah. financing has shifted a lot. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, they've got deep pockets. They're spending big money. You're working with them in a lot of places as well, so I'm sure yeah. we'll get to that. Um, how does this, you know, how does this affect what you're doing? We want to develop and you know, largely 
control and distribute our own IP. That's the business we've always been in. And, you know, it, it could, that can sometimes be in conflict, um, you know, with the needs and the appetite and the business models of, uh, of some of these operators. So it's, you know, it's a bit horses for courses. It's every uh, deal, you know, every show, um, every opportunity on its own merits. It's kind of settling down less into a kind of standoff and a face-off mm -hmm. to a sort of, you know, can we both get something, yeah. particularly something ambitious out of this? And, you know, it's not a bad place for a producer to be. How do you make sure you have access to the talent? You've got to find the right balance between being big and being strong and feeling local and particular and customised and bespoke. And if you do that, I think it's a pretty good model for attracting talent, but God, it's, you know, you know, it's so competitive, particularly in the mm. scripted space. Yeah. We try really hard to hold on to talent that we've nurtured, you know, Charlie Brooker from you know, researcher, scriptwriter mm -hmm. to, you know, mm. kind of global brand. Yeah. Uh, hi, so, Peter, I'm Dean Webster, a, a freelance AP. Um, I'm 26, so only just a little bit younger than you, I think. <laughs> um, and I wanted to know, in the time since you were 26 years old, um, how do you think the television industry has changed and what advice would you give to someone who is 26 now? I would just go for it. My own kids are getting into the sector doing all sorts of different things I never dreamed of. Interestingly, they don't particularly want to work for the established broadcasters anymore. I think you're right. They want to work somewhere in the indie sector or on another platform. It's a brilliant time to be making content here for, for, yeah. from the UK. Yeah. Is there anything that you look at and you sort of think, wow, that's going to change television? Or, wow, yeah, that scares uh, the pants I off mean, genuinely, or... I mentioned it in passing, but artificial intelligence. The first format that uses it the gear that yeah. employs it to change the way we think about making shows. You know, intuitive technology, which has been developed now, you know, around the things that we're making, probably in ways we've made the same for the past 10 years. I think that's going to revolutionize things. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for being here. It's been great having you as an audience. I want to thank uh, our microphone girls. I want to thank the tech team. Uh, and I particularly want to thank Peter Salmon. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you.